I, I love this film because it's kind of expanding this monolith of what black art can be and it's talking about the like nuances of the black experience in the sense that like it's highlighting how racism has evolved into this subtle insidious microaggressive thing you've kind of been slowly rolling out this project how does it feel that it's about to be you know released wide soon it feels good it's a really fun press tour because because of all the controversy around it. Like, I, I feel like these are conversations that I have in my private life. I'm constantly analyzing race and uh, colorism and um, all that good stuff. So it's it's fun to like be authentic in public spaces. <laughs> yeah, no, absolutely. I mean, listen, it, certainly from the trailer alone, as you know, uh, online conversations started, but I do think that, um, that's what art's supposed to do, right? I think good art, at least, uh, you should be able to engage with it. Uh, not even, not even just in a good or bad conversation, but just literally engaging with the art in itself, how it relates to you uh, and other audiences. So, how did it feel just like reading this project? I guess first, because I feel like in my mind, I can't think of another project specifically like this. Uh, not even just in genre, but just exactly what it's tackling. Yeah, it's tackling a a, a very. Um nuanced uh, experience of what it means to be black in America. Um, but when I first read it, I I, I saw myself in it. You know, I, I grew up in Orange County, California, which is a very white place. Um, and I internalized a lot of the messaging from my white peers, uh, which resulted in a lot of shame, a lot of compromise. Um, it was a dark time of my life. And it was only after I left that environment that I was able to um, find my own personal empowerment and, and uh, identify with community. And And I'm so grateful for having, you know, people in my life now that uh, see me. But I understood this character's vicious cycle of, I feel so uncomfortable in these environments. And so my tactic is to appease but in appeasing, I'm allowing them to continue to, to disrespect me, which then makes me uncomfortable again. And so I knew I could bring, uh, I, I knew I could play those emotional layers. Um, but yeah, I was, I was really excited to tell the story because I, I knew that if I had this movie when I was growing up, that it would have helped me get to a place of empowerment a lot sooner. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. I mean, I certainly um, connect with that as well and think that those instances are so sticky and can feel, especially when you're growing up in certain uh, scenarios and certain environments, can feel really isolating. Uh, but they're really actually universal for most Black people in America, um, even sometimes regardless of, of where you're from, you know? And I feel like diving into that so specifically is... Um, really really powerful but then also you have this satire first of all and then also these like fantastical elements that you can add on top of it um and then really dissecting the magical negro trope as well uh so talk to me too about the balancing act tonally like i think that again like we just talked about you're you're diving into those specific real moments that are that you know are really lived in um but also the tone you know there are jokes on jokes on jokes and also there are you know tonal shifts and this like fantastical element so talk to me too about that balancing act because I feel like specifically with your role uh, you kind of are towing the line in a lot of different worlds yeah I, I'm I, usually when I'm a part of a genre film I, I try not to focus on it my job as an actor is to just play the reality of the circumstance and I and I leave the I leave the tonality, is that the word? Tone? I leave the tone to the director. You know, that's his job. Yeah. Like, um, uh, I know that we had a, a played around with what Aaron adopting this magical Negro role would look like since, you know, it is a modern story. And they talk about that in the movie. Like, you're going to be using a modern dialect. Yeah. So we, we had this kind of axis of like, is he like black best friend, like charismatic Cuba Gooding Jr. 
in in um Jerry Maguire. Yes, yes, yes. You know, if it's like not that that's a magical Negro movie, but like you know, if it's like that kind of charisma in order to like uh, like um uh, help these white people, or if it's kind of like a you know a more Herschel Ali like inspirational like powerful black man, you know, and that was kind of me and Kobe's axis for like <laughs> how I give advice to these clients. So I guess like in a way that that, that was kind of managing tone. Yeah. I mean, listen, the fact that we, again, you have those references that are so deep and baked into, you know, our own film knowledge mm -hmm. um, speaks to kind of the power of that trope. And even though it, it comes in various degrees, I think the way it dissects it is really interesting. And then specifically in that huge monologue at the end, uh, and I wanted to talk to you about like just what that day was like on set. Um, it feels like, at least from the viewer's perspective, it feels like it's kind of the thesis of the whole movie kind of wrapped up in that moment. Um, and I just wanted to know what it was like. Again, it felt super obviously raw and vulnerable, but um, again, really powerful to like see, like put to words um, certain feelings that um, again, I think are are a lot more universal than we realize. Like I just spoke from the heart. It, it was cool because I didn't really have to prepare in any way. I just had to learn the words. And then like, I didn't listen to music beforehand. I didn't like, take a second to like gather myself I just I was like talking chatting and like I like it was every day and then I would just go into it and, and it was a lot of tears but like a lot of laughs at the same time you know that scene is so funny mm -hmm. um so it was just it was oh uh I like it was a mix of emotions that somehow complemented each other um, but like for them to exist in that space, it felt weird. It was weird because it was like people were crying and like laughing through tears. <laughs> like Kobe would come and like with tears in his eyes and like, like try to be like, okay, maybe you could slow down on this part. <laughs> you know, it's like, um, yeah, it was a really, it was a really, I feel like bonding experience because we were all going through this emotional roller coaster together. I mean, but that's what, that's how it feels in life most times, you know, like, of course you have like these super crazy dramatic moments, but a lot of times are bookended through laughs or some ridiculous thing, you know, through tears, all those things. And I feel like, again, it, it lands almost better, at least to me like that, uh, allowing for, for all the emotions to exist at the same time because often they do. I think like happiness and sadness are it's you know and the you know there's, there's like a emotions wheel kind of like a color wheel <laughs> like I think they're like one of the same they're like two two sides of the same coin uh and I kind of just kind of loops us back to the beginning again I think that I'm like constantly just thinking about like our relationship to social media and then media at large right so like you have this trailer come out and immediately you can have a lot of opinions about something without having seen it which is kind of like a human instinct to have and then I think especially too when we have you know, our own really stern opinions about our own lives. And I'm excited for when this movie finally comes out for people to kind of see it and like make whatever decisions they want to for themselves. But what would you maybe say or just hope that maybe audiences can kind of go into seeing this movie? I think that if you're going to form an opinion about something, you should see it. You know, I'm I'm a bit of a hypocrite because I, I also make opinions about what I'm gonna or not, what I'm going to see or not see based off of like trailers um but I also know that like my best film exp experiences have been walking into movies without knowing anything about it I think a lot of people who are part of that initial backlash might go hate watch it <laughs> and then realize like <laughs> that it's actually way better than they think it is mm -hmm. um which I'm excited for I but at the end of the day you know it's like if you don't if you're a black person and you don't identify with like this specific black experience, that's fine. I, I love this film because it's kind of expanding this monolith of what black art can be. And it's talking about the like nuances of the black experience in the sense that like, it's highlighting how racism has evolved into this subtle, insidious, microaggressive thing. How a lot of it is rooted in white people's neglect of black people in their spaces um and i think a lot of people will relate to that but if you don't 
if you're like i'm black and i'm proud i've never compromised my identity i've never done that mm -hmm. i say like dope you are like the golden child amongst us <laughs> i wish i could be you um but you know consider that your brothers and sisters might have and and they need this um a film that can help them eradicate the shame behind that.